So a, a formal welcome, a formal good evening to all of you. There is good news also at hand that uh, our, our virus is possibly taking a place which will uh, lead us to a better 2022 than the last uh, two years. So with this uh, hope, with this good wishes, with this prayer, let us start this meeting. Today we are we uh, we have chosen uh, as our poet of the month the uh, national poet of Scotland, a country that has given so much to to, <clears throat> to us in Calcutta, uh, our our jute mills, our biggest of uh, our trading trading houses, our colleges and schools, our universities. So much culture, so much tradition. Our Addas, every month since the year 2000 or so, uh, we have tried to focus on on the poet, on a poet born in that month, and, and a great poet born in that month. And with this focus, we've been able to, to pay tributes to at least 100 poets who are uh, world-renowned, uh, amongst them poets each country or each way of writing or each uh, uh, format of poetry so that different poets are with us. And today, of course, in, uh, in January, on the 25th of January, Robert Byrne was born. And we're so happy that Christine, who is from Scotland, are going to give you the most interesting uh, tribute but uh, before I, I pass this on to uh, Chandrani, please have a look at our, at our chapbook. That is Chandrani Bishwas, who will be in conversation with, uh, uh, with Christine. And uh, uh, I will not read the whole thing, but uh, an associate professor of English, St. Xavier's College, head of department for five years, M. Phil from JNU, a PhD from JU Calcutta, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, and presented papers, delivered lectures, resource person, um, her books, uh, especially her book uh, "Women and uh, War," uh, is, is absolutely uh, very much critiqued. Her publications are many, and her researches are many, and uh, especially uh, we, we 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 remember her conversation with. Ruskin bond, which is which is a historical conversation, as I'm sure will be today, a conversation with Christine De Luca. Before I hand over, may I please request our president, Professor Uma Das Gupta, to welcome you, who uh, knows England so well, not 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 just having lived in Oxford for her DPhil but uh, who uh, regularly uh, spends months every year in England. Uma, please. Thank you. Indeed, I'm only very happy to say these very few words of welcome to all of you, but especially to Christine De Luca. Um, and it's wonderful that um, we are celebrating Robert Burns. I'm sure you know Burns has always been a very favorite poet of Bengal, even a sentimental moment for us, because all of us uh, uh, who have grow, grown up with English education, uh, as has been the case, um, Burns is not, not an unfamiliar name. Not only is he not an unfamiliar name, he's also a, a very favorite name. Also, Srijan's poetry adda. Uh, Srijan has three ongoing addas. Uh, but as I think everyone else in Srijan will agree with me, that the poetry adda is the most popular. Uh, uh, and indeed, so many people participate in the poetry adda uh, that it is, it, it is something of an experience. Um, and I have been, you know, many, on many an occasion, just sitting and enjoying their poetry. And this, uh, the poets are often sometimes of course, there are established poets who come, but many of them are young poets and who uh, 
present with with much love and much uh, much enthusiasm. So it is it is indeed a a, a, a special uh, expression of Srijan's poetry, which has the subtitle to its to its name, which is the only um, temple that. <laughs> worships poetry and I, and I do think that's found expression in the right form in bringing so many poets together and uh, especially when we have a poet like you Christine from the Scottish Poetry mm -hmm. Library it feels truly uh, a privilege uh, to have uh, somebody like you who's obviously been devoted to the cause of poetry so welcome all of you and welcome Christine Dilmukha. Thank you, Uma. Uh, now, uh, Chandrani, please take over and please give in to, uh, to really celebrating uh, the poetry of uh, Robert Burns. Over to you, Chandrani. It's fine. Thank you, Basant. Thank you, Umadi. I feel very honored to be a part of the poetry at the session in Srijan. I was there to William Carlos Williams's poetry, but Trijan is always very close to our hearts. So good evening and welcome everyone. We have assembled here today, as Basant uh, and Umadi pointed out, to pay a tribute to Robert Burns, one of the finest poets in the Scottish literary tradition. We all know that these lively poetry sessions are organized by Trijan to celebrate the birthdays of eminent poets where his or her works are read out, discussed, and there are so many interesting deliberations. Uh, we, have, we have gathered here on the special occasion of Robert Burns's birthday, uh, coming from none other than an eminent poet from Scotland, Christine De Luca. Thank you. Thank you, Christine, for being here. Who was appointed Edinburgh's Makar, or Poet Laureate, from 2014 to 17? Many of us know her through her poetry, but Srijan's poetry at the session offers us an opportunity to strengthen our acquaintance through her readings of Robert Burns's poetry. And in the second session, she'll be reading her poems as well. And Annapurna is going to uh, host that part. In fact, the other day in uh, our online meeting, as Basan pointed out, on 26 January, we fondly remembered Christine's visit to Calcutta in 2009 the reading of her poetry at Srijan's rooftop and Basant recollected the memory of visiting the places of historical interest, uh, you know, uh, as Scottish historical interest in Kolkata and the, the unforgettable tram ride, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, that's very nice to remember. But a uh, little <laughs> formal introduction to Christine De Luca. Uh, Christine is a very eminent poet in the Scottish literary tradition. She writes both in English and Shetlandic, a blend of old Scots and uh, Norse influence. Um, her very first poetry collection had won her the Shetland Writing Prize in 1996, again in 1999. Her eighth poetry co collection, v Vive, has just been published. Her work continuing to win various important prizes all through, including being selected for the Scottish Poetry Library's Best Scottish Poems four times in recent years. She was appointed Edinburgh's Makar Poet Laureate for, uh, from 2014 to 2017, featured in many anthologies and literary journals, national and international. Her poems have been translated into many languages, including Bengali. That's wonderful to hear with several bilingual volumes in French, Italian, Icelandic, Norwegian, and English. She has also collaborated with musicians and artists. Her most recent poetry collaboration is Another Time, Another Place, with Victoria Crow, Scottish Gallery 2021. She is a member of Edinburgh's longstanding Shaw Poets and a founder member of Hansel Cooperative Press, which encourages dialect writing and art in Orkney and uh, Shetland. She has taken part in conferences and read at countless events, including book and poetry festivals all over Europe and Canada and India, including, of course, Srijan's rooftop, courtesy the British Council, an evening we shall forever treasure. <laughs> she has also 
taken part in se uh, several BBC Radio programs and her poems used in different series on BBC Radio 4. Once again, an honor, Christine, to share the platform, mm -hmm. webinar platform to you and with many other eminent personages. Uh, now, I would request Christine to uh, open up the introduction to Burns. Burns okay. is a favorite poet among us, but more of that. And when, when you read your, the, those poems we have chosen, we'll have some little conversation. Over to Christine. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much, Shanjani. And thank you, Besan, for your lovely welcome. It's great to remember the time in Calcutta those years ago and rattling around the city in the tram and seeing all these sights and uh, taking part in the rooftop. And I remember the lovely party in the um, at the end of our time there. It was just magical. So thank you so much. And um, I think I'll just get straight on to buns, if you don't mind. Well, there's a picture of Robert Burns and his dates. And he is indeed a, a sort of an icon along with the, the red stag and things like that and shortbread tins. Um, and I don't think we can get away from the fact that he is definitely the one poet that Scots um, turn to and think of as their poet. Uh, I think because he was a poet of the people. Um, many of the, the English romantic poets were perhaps a little bit loftier in some ways than, than Burns. Burns came of a very poor family and he um, was able to speak to the hearts of people that were rather like him. So we have these Burns suppers on the 25th of January, his birthday every year. I thought it would be helpful perhaps to just think about the kind of Scotland that he was working in. There were some negatives. Um, Scotland had definitely lost its pride in itself. Um, we had a union of the crowns with England in 1603 and our parliaments joined in 1707 and really were very, very poor at that time. Um, the Scottish Church, the Church of Scotland, had fought long and hard uh, for the Scottish Reformation and it was a kind of a slightly a Calvinistic model rather than a Lutheran one. Um, but it was a very hard won uh, battle in the 1650s and 15 and 1600s and um, something that was sort of tied in with the, the politics, the church and the state were pretty much entwined. And the, 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 the state gave the church the, the, the kind of moral authority and it was sort of judge and jury and it was also in the pocket of the, the landowning class. They often helped pay for the churches or pay for the ministers. Um, and it was starting to kind of unravel because it was just too legalistic, too hard on people. And people were having to, they were being marched up and stood at the front of the church on a Sunday and, and asked to confess their sins in front of the whole congregation. There was no father confessor. There was no hole in the corner confessing. It had to be done in front of everybody. And then once you paid your price, then you were back into communion. So it was a kind of a harsh environment. On the positive side, I think um, it was the romantic era in poetry and, and Burns, although he was from a poor family, and this is long before um, education was a state affair, he had had a reasonable amount of education and he would have read, I'm sure, um, the works of some of these romantic poets that I've mentioned there, Wordsworth, Keats perhaps, and certainly he'd be aware of Walter Scott's writing. But besides that, I think, and possibly even more importantly, he was part of this Scottish folk tradition, story, song, and ballad. And that really fed into his poetic consciousness. And I think you can almost hear the, the strains of, of that in his poems and in the songs. It was also the era of the Scottish Enlightenment. Um, at that time, um, science and rationalism and philosophy were establishing themselves. And, um, and this was linked really to political radic radicalism as well. People wanted a change. Um, and even poor farmers in deepest Ayrshire on the southwest 
sorry, that's my clock, um, of Scotland, even quite poor farmers were quite independent minded. They owned their little farms and they could see that, um, or they rented their little farms perhaps, and they could see that life could be better. Um, he was versatile in both Scots and English and steeped in the work of people like Robert Ferguson, who had gone before him. Robert Ferguson was an Edinburgh poet, just a little before Burns, and sadly died as a very young man in his early 20s. But he was writing in that same style. Alan Ramsey would be another one. So there was a lot of influences going on there at the time, some of them negative, some of them positive. I'm sure you probably know most of this, but he was the eldest son of a biggish family. I think there were seven or eight of them. His father died relatively young, and this left Robert really as the man in charge of family and farm um, at a fairly immature age, really. Him and one of his brothers, I think, tried to run the farm. It was desperately poor. They just weren't able to make much at all. And at one point later on, he did indeed accept a position in Jamaica overseeing slaves. I think that's something to bear in mind when we come to the poem, A Man's a Man for Ah, that, that great sort of statement of the common humanity of man. Yet he was out of poverty, willing to um, prostitute himself, you might say, in the slave trade. It's rather a sad aspect of his history. Luckily, his first little collection of poems um, did well, and it, it struck a chord with people in his local area and also with the kind of literati in the cities. So that was, that was good. He was also taken up by the Masonic movement. He was a Mason. Um, I don't know if you're aware of the Masonic movement. It's a worldwide movement, and it was a fraternity of brothers. And as, as a lot of Scots emigrated to places like Canada and USA and Australia and New Zealand, they took with them that brotherhood and they took with them the, the Masonic traditions and very formal in their meetings. And I, I today, I can see in every burn supper I ever attend, I see that Masonic tradition. It was very male dominated for a start, very formal. It was ritualistic. It fitted a certain pattern and you do not deviate uh, from it. But of course, it was great positive for Burns because there were many of them. And there are more statues to Burns, I think, in the world than I think to anybody else, as far as I know. And I think that's maybe something to do with this Masonic tradition. So it didn't do him any harm. But this stage, of course, he had already fathered several children. Um, and Jean, he did fall in love with Jean Armour. And I think he wanted to marry her, but her family were maybe less than keen. Uh, a poor farmer and a struggling poet and a man with a not a very good sexual history. But later on, they did get married and settled in back in Ayrshire. And she um, had twins and I think more children to him. And she even was willing to bring up uh, at least one of his illegitimate children. So she was a good woman. Uh, I've said he has a hectic, if not scandalous, love life. It went on and on and on. Eventually, um, his health was poor. He had a rheumatic heart and he was... He took up a job as a customs and excise um, man in further south, nearer the English border in Dumfries. And um, that was really his last job. So I've mentioned the Masons and he sadly died at a pretty young age, 37. You'll know uh, his themes, I'm sure. One of the main ones is common humanity, social injustice, the democratic sensibility. Um, perhaps maybe a little bit stronger in Scotland than in England, at least we like to think so, but whether that's true or not, I really don't know. Nature, he was a farmer. He had tramped the hills and valleys. He'd sown the seed and harvested the grain. So he knew what life was about and, and loved nature. He was a great love poet 
and he did us a great service by collecting many folk songs and writing them down and improving the lyrics and setting new lyrics to old folk tunes. Um, so I think maybe that's a bit like Tagore. He did some of that, if I remember correctly. He's sort of our Tagore in many ways. He did write about family and home, um, sometimes quite nicely, but he was a great satirist. And I think some of his best poems are, are those where he really pokes at hypocrisy. And there was plenty of that around. So if we look at this idea of common humanity, and I've, I've highlighted two of the verses, and you'll see why later on. And then after that, um, perhaps um, Chandrandi and I can have a little chat. A man's a man for a that. Is there for honest poverty that hangs its head and a that? The coward slave, we pass him by, we dare be poor for a that. For a that and a that, our toils obscure and a that. The rank is but the guinea stamp. The man's the goad for a that. What though on hamely fare we dine, we're hod and grey and a that. Give fools their silks and knaves their wine. A man's a man for a that. For a that and a that. Their tinsel show and a that. The honest man, though e'er say poor, is King Amen for all that. I'll just uh, interrupt for a minute. All yes. of you can see that Christine has taken so much trouble in putting by the side those, you know, the English uh, equivalent of uh, of the Scottish words. So uh, please, you can note, you know, and you'll be able to enjoy the poem much more. Yeah. She's reading in, in, in a lovely tongue. So please, she's been uh, very, very kind and put the, put the meanings on the side. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Lively and sharp tongued and fool <laughs> in the, yeah. the margin. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's quite satirical. You see, on Birky Card, a lord was struts and stares and a that. Though hundreds worship at his word, he's but a cough for a that. For a that and a that. His ribbon, star, and a that. The man of oh, independent mind, he looks and laughs at a that. A prince can make a belted knight, a marquis, duke, and a that. But an honest man's a boon as might, good faith, he man a far that. For a that and a that, their dignities and a that. The pith of sense and pride of worth are higher rank than a that. Then let us pray that come it may, as come it will for all that, that sense and worth o'er all the earth shall bear the green all that, for all that and all that, it's coming yet for all that the man to man the world o'er shall brothers be for all that and just to show you one thing before we chat um this was a beautiful banner i suppose you could call it that robin who was director of the scottish poetry library at the time she organized this it was a huge building site quite near the poetry library and the idea was to cover it while it was being demolished with this massive banner hung on the scaffolding and so we were invited to uh, decorate one letter from oops from the poem and um then and color it in and then a digital artist created this. And you can see it's the two verses that were highlighted. A man's a man for a that. What though on hamely fair we dine, we're hod and grey and a that. Gave fools their silks and knaves their wine. A man's a man for a that. For a that and a that. Their tinsel show and a that. The honest man, though e'er say poor, is king of men for a that. And then the last verse, then let us pray and so on. Uh, um, men, the world over, shall brothers be for all that. And the Beg your pardon, are... Christine. Can you tell me this? Can you tell us the size of this? 
How, how many feet by how many feet maybe? Well, I think if you think of perhaps a, a six or seven story building, Oof. it would be as high as that and perhaps as wide, well, wider. So it was a big um, area in the old town, quite near Waverley Station that was being knocked on. It's the old fruit market area. And some of these were big, big warehouses. And so it was massive, really massive. But each page we did, each letter was only, I think, about maybe A3 at the most, or even A4. So the digital artist did a wonderful job. It was really quite startling. Anyway, uh, Chandrani, do you want to say something now? Oh. I have uh, very two short observations and one question. That is uh, uh, Burns's experience... Uh, he was almost pushed into being a supervisor in the Jamaican uh, slave estate. So this comes out as this this poetry is a beautiful statement on his on his humane, sympathetic attitude, where mm -hmm. he's identifying with the plight of the slaves. But uh, how uh, do we look upon the poem as a kind of a problematization of a white man, a white man? Uh, mm -hmm. you know, uh, being, uh, you know, persuaded to go to earn a living into an estate and he watches these slaves being tortured and whatever. And he mm -hmm. comes out uh, with his observations on uh, restoration of human dignity, etc. But the point is that he was still working for them. So mm -hmm. uh, how is it being problematized? Uh, this, this is something. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. It's a very complex thing that he mm -hmm. is. He, he was, didn't actually go, Chandrani. He yeah. never actually went, so that he oh. was saved from that. Okay, okay. I think also in maybe it's it's easy to kind of judge him in the light of um, this era. In that era, I think um, Scots men going to the to mm. the West Indies were were lionized and thought to be doing a good thing, you know, uh, helping um, bring trade. Yeah, that's, that's what I'm saying. But that yeah. to that race issue or the race question is very much there. It's, yeah. uh, he, uh, this this white man empathizing so much with this is something amazing, you know, because in uh, a poem of this kind during that time is yeah. a really a great statement on his humanity. Yeah, that highlights his humanity. And yeah. uh, and one more thing that I remembered is uh, Burns is often uh, being being his name is uttered almost in the same vein with the the pre romantic poets like Thomas mm -hmm. Gray and many mm -hmm. others, mm -hmm. who also, Thomas Gray, in his very famous poem, Elegy written in the country church mm -hmm. here, that mm -hmm. arises the class distinctions and the marginalization of the poor in yeah. a beautiful way. You yeah. know, he, yeah. he, he talks about it. And I find similarities. So, you know, the, the transitional poets of the late 18th century pre-romantics are the ones whom mm -hmm. we associate with Burns and we celebrate Burns with, with yeah. them. And uh, that is that is really also... Mm -hmm. Something yeah. that stands out, and uh, yes, you may well have read Thomas Gray's elegy. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Thomas Gray and many other poets. You know, there, besides that love of nature and other things, we do yeah. see this satire coming out—a very strong indictment of the class distinctions and of the uh, of the uh, of the uh, of the troubles and the, the yeah. condition of the underprivileged in the the rural poor. Yeah, yeah. So this yeah. is also there. So. So it's it's really very beautiful and amazing. Besides his attitude to nature, yeah, good, good. Which, which takes us very neatly on to nature as a yes. theme. <laughs> yes, it does. <laughs> so this one is called to mouse, and um, he was plowing, and he turned up her nest with his plow. Isn't but this one of the book. most famous poems of his? Yes, yes. A lot of children in Scotland <laughs> learn this and, and see it with a great expression. Yeah. It's a beautiful poem. Yes. It is a nice poem, yeah. It's a very nice poem. And he sometimes slips into English when he's being a little bit philosophical. We sleek at coor and timorous beastie. Oh, what a panic's in thy breasty. The needna start away so hasty with bicker and brattle. I would be laith to rin and chase thee. Well, murdering prattle, paddle. I'm truly sorry man's dominion has broken nature's social union and justifies that ill opinion which makes thee startle at me, thy poor earth-born companion and fellow mortal. I doubt na whiles, but thou man thieve, what then, poor beastie, thou man live? A demon icker in a thrave is smarty 
I'll get a blessing with a leave and never missed. Thy wee bit hoosie too, in ruin, its silly was the winds are strewing, and nothing now to big a new in of foggage green, and bleak December's winds ensuing, both snell and keen. Thou saw the fields laid bare and waste, and weary winter coming fast, and cosy here, beneath the blast, thou thought to dwell, till Crash! The cruel cooter passed out through thy cell. That wee bit heap o' leaves and stibble has cost thee money a weary nibble. Now thou's turned out for all thy trouble, but house are held to thole the winter sleety dribble and cranrach called. But mousy thou art no thy lane, in proving foresight may be vain, the best laid schemes o' mice and men gang after glee, and lay us naught but grief and pain for promised joy. Still thou art blessed compared with me, the present only toucheth thee, but och I backward cast my e on prospects drear and forward. Though I cannot see, I guess, and fear. So that's that one. Beautiful. And it's written in what they call the standard habit. Um, and he used it an awful lot. Mm -hmm. um, a favourite form, six lines, with a rhyme scheme, um, A, 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 B, A, B. And of course, it's got the, the four feet, four feet, four wow. feet, two feet four and two so you get this um kind of declamatory end to it um it it, it gives you emphasis i think at the, at the end of each each stanza and <clears throat> habby was i think the name of a piper who must have invented it and it was used by robert ferguson um and i think buns picked it up and it seemed to fit the scots tongue and perhaps walking and things like that and um just his themes so that's a little bit there. Do you want to say anything, Chantrani? Yeah. yeah. I, I want to interrupt just a minute. Yeah. My God, we have been, I've been uh, uh, reading Burns for the last 50 years, but this beautiful way in which, Christine, you have read yeah. has provided an absolutely, <laughs> absolutely different dimension. Perspective, yes. It's absolutely, <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm flabbergasted. Yeah, Thank you so much, Christine. Uh -huh. Thank oh, you so good, much. Good. Yeah. Just two things that, it's the experience of a tenant farmer and uh, you know this this again highlights his empathy you know because yeah. he it seems to bring out that all creatures are bound together in a natural mutual benevolence and in in uh, our uh, the present day context when we are yeah. talking so much about environment and yeah. ecology and uh, you know back to nature thing uh, it is so relevant especially these two lines i'm truly sorry man's dominion has uh -huh. broken nature's social union i yeah. mean he could see these things coming up i mean through the metaphor of the mouse yeah so that, that the environment is getting destroyed i mean it's so very it's a visionary uh, yeah. in, in that sense of the term yeah. because we it's, when we are talking about ecology and so ecocentric things or also yeah. in literary criticism i mean yeah. he's so relevant and you yes. brought that out so beautifully in your reading it's amazing. And, uh, you know, here the mouse is an object of compassion and the mouse is not just the mouse. It's a metaphor for entire nature. Yeah. And uh, mm -hmm. I believe that there is also a Scottish tradition of didactic poems appropriating the voices or experience of beasts. And, uh, you know, yeah. uh, there's, a, there's a lovely example. Yeah, there was a lovely um, The Town Mouse and the Country Mouse in Scots by Robert Henderson, yes. who was earlier than Burns and earlier than Ferguson. And uh, it's, again, the two mice and the, the town mm -hmm. mouse comes, mm -hmm. uh, the country mouse comes to visit the yeah. town mouse, her cousin, and mm -hmm. um, eventually just gives up, can't stand it. Although there's plenty food in the larder, she wants back to her rural um, area where she's actually happier and um, she has less less to eat but she's she's yeah it's kind of an very ecological relevant. one as well very, yeah. very relevant beautiful thank yeah. you christine okay right you are now love this is the more controversial bit <clears throat> so we know of lizzie Patton and jean armor married jean 
Mary Morrison. He wrote beautiful, beautiful song to Mary Morrison. Mrs. McElhose, who he called Clorinda, she was the Edinburgh rather upper class lady that he took up with and had an affair. Um, but I think, yes, there were at least as many again. And he wrote this um, song, supposedly, I think, to Clorinda when he was about to set off for the West Indies. And it's, it's a really a lovely, lovely song. But at the same time, he was having another affair with her maid downstairs. So it does make you wonder sometimes about a Robert uh, and his attitude to women. <laughs> so a fond kiss. <clears throat> One fond, one fond kiss, a fond kiss, and then we sever. A farewell, and then forever. Deep in heart-wrung tears, I'll pledge thee. Warring sighs and groans, I'll wage thee. Who shall say that fortune grieves him, while the star of hope she leaves him? Me, nature for twinkle lights me. Dark despair around benights me. I'll ne ne'er blame my partial fancy, nothing could resist my Nancy, but to see her was to love her, love but her, and love forever. Had we never loved so kindly, had we never loved say blindly never met or never parted we had never been broken hearted fare thee will thou first and fairest fare thee will thou best and dearest thine be ilka joy and treasure peace enjoyment love and pleasure a fond kiss, and then we sever. A farewell, alas, forever. Deep in heart wrung tears, I'll pledge thee. Warring sighs and groans, I'll wage thee. So it is quite an affecting song, but I think we do need to bear in mind perhaps um, what he was up to. And I'll just go on a little bit about. Um, not so much the young love, but the more mature love, the married love. And he does have some poems like um, The Cotter Saturday Night, which sort of gives you that nice feeling. Um, but he can be really quite harsh about women, especially older women, and quite sexist. So this is just one little stanza from Sick a Wife as Willie Had. Such a wife Willie Had. She has one eye, she has but one. The cat has two, the very colour five rusty teeth besides a stump, a clapper tongue would deafen or would stun a miller, a whiskery beard around her mouth, her nose and chin, they threaten one another, they coincide. Such a wife as Willie had, I would not give a button for her. She had an E, she had but in, the cat has twa the very colour, five rusty teeth there by a stump, a clapper tongue would deave a miller, a whisk and beard about her moo, her nose and chin they threaten either. Sick a wife as Willie had, I wouldn't give a button for her. <laughs> now, if you compare that one, no, that's the old man talking about the old woman. Here's John Anderson, my Joe. Mm, this is a very interesting one. Yeah, uh, which yeah, is the old know. woman talking about the old man, her husband. Mm -hmm. Her husband, John Anderson, my love. John, my Joe, my love. And it was a very, very body folk song. You see a little note on the side there. Burns had collected. And it really was excoriating. This old woman was um, laying out for the impotence of her old husband and saying this just wasn't good enough. But anyway, Burns turned it into this. So it's the woman talking. John Anderson, my Joe, John, when we were first acquaint, your locks were like the raven, your bonny brow was brent. But now your brow is bell, John, your locks are like the snow. But blessings on your frosty pow, John Anderson, my Joe. 
John Anderson, my Joe John, we climb the hill together. And money a canty day, John, we've had been another. Now we men totter down, John, and hand in hand we'll go and sleep together at the food, John Anderson, by Joe. Beautiful. All right, Chandrani, over to you. It's so beautiful. Thank you so much. Just allowing to sink those uh, words inside. Um, it's, it's so beautiful. And uh, mm, if he has been so satirical and sexist, definitely, I wouldn't call him misogynist. It's a harsh word to use. But <laughs> definitely very sexist. And we work, Anna, we work on gender so much. And so many among us, this is a little uh, unnerving. But it is OK. Even Shelley was in relation with many women. So yeah. we are not going to. Yeah, I suppose you know it, uh, uh -huh. up yeah. the popularity quotient yeah. somewhere. Oh, absolutely, yes, he was very. I think he was very handsome. But many uh -huh. of us, uh, um, Burns is uh, only a fond kiss yes. and yes. love is like a yeah. red, 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 rose. red, red rose. So, you know, yes. he's all passion. Yes. And very passionate. Uh, when you think yeah. of uh, Burns, we can think of passion. Yeah. That's the yeah. first, Absolutely. That's the image first that thing. That's the first thing that comes to our mind. And yeah. but, but what I loved about this poem, and I, I think many of you will agree, is uh, this, this female speaker is as old as John. And yeah. it's the end of their long journey of love where mm -hmm. the same grave is awaiting them. And yeah. It's so mellow, it's so beautiful. She's not <laughs> critical that he's old, but of course she's complaining in the, the beginning of the poem. So there's a moment of tenderness. There's a moment of pathos mm -hmm. in the poem and an acceptance. <laughs> there's one thing I can't, portrait, one thing I can't, uh, can't help but the observe. Yeah. Yeah. There, is, there are all these three lovely women talking about uh, about Burns. I wish there was one man who could sort of represent the man's point of view. <laughs> the man is Robert Burns. Robert. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think he was quite quite intelligent and quite sexy and probably we would have <laughs> we would have probably fallen for him as well, fallen under his spell. But it's funny that he, he uh, sanitized that particular poem, um, that particular ballad. I mean, it really was bawdy, and this old woman was saying exactly what she thought about it all, you know. So I think that's quite an interesting, an interesting thing. We should push on, I think, because the satire is really worth uh, worth it. I think um, Willie William was a Kirk elder, an elder of the church, and uh, a ruler, a ruling elder, and. Um, he would be every Sunday listening to the um, confessions in front of the congregation of all the people who had perhaps fornicated or committed adultery, or usually it was sexual impropriety, perhaps had a baby before the nine months was up, you know, when they were married, uh, that kind of thing. So here's Holy Willie, he's asking God directly for some forgiveness. O oh, thou that in the heavens dost dwell, wha, as it pleases best thyself, saints, in to heaven and tend to hell, ah, for thy glory, and no for any good or ill they've done before thee. Yet I am here, a chosen sample, to show thy grace is great and ample. I'm here, a pillar of thy temple, strong as a rock, a guide a ruler and example to our thy flock. O Lord, thou kens what zeal I bear, when drinkers drink and swearers swear, and singing there and dancing here with great and sma, for I am keep it by the fear free from them ah. But yet, O oh Lord, I confess I must, at times I'm fashed with fleshly lust, and sometimes too in worldly trust, vile self gets in. But thou remembers we are dust, defiled with sin. O oh Lord, yestreen thou kens we meg, thy pardon I sincerely beg. Oh, may it never be a living plague to my dishonour, and I'll ne'er lift a lawless leg again upon her. 
Besides, I further man a vow, will Lizzie's lass three times I trow. But Lord, that Friday I was foo when I came nearer, or else thou kens thy servant true would never steer her. But Lord, remember me and mine with mercies temporal and divine that I for grace and gear may shine excelled by none, and all the glory shall be thine. Amen. Amen. Brilliant. <laughs> it's quite fun, isn't it? Yeah. And I, I love the lawless, the lawless leg. You know, if, if you weren't married, but you were having sex, then that was a lawless <laughs> leg that he was lifting on her. <laughs> well, it was a very, very strong... all, the all the hypocrites that were yeah. lined up in church. He was right. seeing them. Yeah, right. yeah. Right. So that was that was quite a fun one, I think. Yeah. And at some point, we're almost time out, so should we move on to Alzheimer's sign? Yes. It's yes, probably yes, the best yes. known. And uh, I'll maybe just sing the first wee bit and the last wee bit. And then I think you're going to sing, Shandran. Yeah, the that? first and the last. <laughs> right, okay. See if I can do it. Should all acquaintance be forgot and never brought to mind? Should all acquaintance be forgot and all the lang sign? For all the lang sign, my dear, for all the lang sign, we'll take a cup. Oh, kindness yet for all lang syne. And there's a hand, my trusty fear, and gaze a hand o' oh, thine. We'll take a right good worldly walk for all lang syne. Oh, lovely. <laughs> So I'm going to stop sharing at that this point. Absolutely <laughs> brilliant, as usual. <laughs> uh, we know about this association between old Lansign and Tagore. Tagore drew a lot of inspiration from the Scottish part, and uh, he sort of uh, transformed it into a beautiful poem in the section Frame O Prokriti, written in 1885, called Purano Shedi And on this note, we end. I'm just going to sing two stanzas. <clears throat> Purano she dine kotha bhul di ki re hayo she chokhe dekha prane kotha she ki bhola jai aya rekhti bar aya re shakha prane majhe God, you sent me to tears. <laughs> what <have> uh, I <laughs> uh, thanks so much to Christine for opening up so many windows. Now, I believe there's another to go song, uh, Pule Pule Dhole Dhole, ah, yes. which is also inspired by the Scottish right. tradition. Yes, yes, I don't know the original. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, mm -hmm. And uh, 
it's amazing because we can see both the traditions uh, mm -hmm. sung today, the old vigorous folk song and this mm -hmm. soft Tagore melody. Mm -hmm. So I just, just want to know. Just, I just, oh, I just want to make you. a very quick, uh, a quick observation, uh, Chandrani and Christine. Um, in the context of nature and nurture and his avid sexuality, um, D.H. Lawrence uh, made a couple of points about how natural it was and the word that Basant just used about the folk element, the element of the natural world. I think, Christine, you and Chandrani broke, brought that out pretty well, although one must agree and argue that the French feminists, especially uh, Luce Irigori, yes, they made uh, an observation about Burns, uh, and that was that his libido in his sexual life was perhaps akin to the libido in his life as a poet. Christine, this is Roma. Thank you uh -huh. so much for that scintillating uh, uh, thing of Burns. I just wanted to say that you brought home to me this evening not only Burns' very distinct radical voice, but also what I'm very grateful to you for is you brought out a very distinct Scottish wo uh, uh, mm -hmm. voice this evening. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm very familiar with your country. I'm very familiar with England and Wales. But t tonight, you brought in something very magical, and that's a Scottish word. Uh, 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 on behalf of all of you, may I invite you, uh, Cecile, who is from France. Thank you. And uh, uh, would you would you like to comment something, Cecile? Well, I, I hadn't thought uh, of making that correspondence. I was just sim uh, under the, the impact of this brilliant talk and mm -hmm. uh, this brilliant rendering of the poems. I, I, I loved hearing the, the songs and everything. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> You're very kind. <laughs> no. You echo our words. Uh, Thank you, both of all of you. We are running behind the clock. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, so uh, if, if there's nothing more, I I would uh, really uh, uh, want to, uh, uh, to take your permission to introduce uh, uh, Onnapurna, please. Is, is that OK? Yes, of course. Please, we want to listen to uh, Onnapurna in conversation with Christine. A better introduction of uh, uh, Onnapurna palette is here in this chat book. So please have a look at this, because it has been emailed to each one of you. But, uh, but uh, uh, briefly, Onupurna also is an assistant professor of English, an MPhil and a PhD, someone who has been on the steering committee of the American Literature and Culture Interest Group. Uh, she is a recipient of uh, Shastri uh, Knowledge Mobilization Grant. Uh, she has uh, chaired a number of academic sessions, seminars, national as well as international. She has judged and participated in contests, elocution contests, debates, etc. And uh, what Trijan cannot forget is a tribute to Maya Angelou when she had made Maya's uh, poetry uh, uh, become live for us. That, that Onnapurna has today uh, volunteered to anchor the rest of this evening. And Trijan is indeed grateful. Uh, please, Onnapurna, please uh, take over. Thank you so much, uh, Basanji, for uh, such a kind uh, introduction. And I'm highly honored to be a part of this event. After such a brilliant tribute paid to Robert Burns by Christine, it is only but uh, fitting that we should follow it up with um, readings by uh, poets to make this evening even more memorable. So uh, thanks to the marvels of technology, we have a galaxy of poets here who will read in Hindi, Bengali, Urdu, and English. Well, we are living in very difficult times, times of fear, disease, death, pain, loss. 
And at such moments, we turn to literature and poetry for solace and comfort. Poetry connects, heals, teaches us empathy, compassion, kindness, and forgiveness. Just what we need in today's fast-paced, competitive world. And the warm, democratic quality of Burns's writing inspires us. And may I invoke uh, William Wordsworth at this point, who said that uh, best portion of a good man's life, his little nameless, unremembered acts of kindness and of love. So may I now have the pleasure of inviting Akhilesh Kumar Mishra, whose pen name is Bodhisattva. Yes, yes he's, he's right here. He's with us. And uh, as I said, the details about Bodhisattva are given in the chat book. He is from um, uh, Uttar Pradesh, from Allahabad University. And he has written also not only does he write poetry he's written for television serials as well as for bollywood so we eagerly look forward to your poetry bodhisattva ji ko agar theek se swagat karna hai to priyankar ji jitne pyar se kar payenge utne hum koi nahi kar payenge to main unse anurodh karunga priyankar ji aap bodhisattva ji ko hamara pyar उनके आने के आने के लिए वो हमारा धन्यवाद सृजन के लिए आप उनको जरूर जितने प्यार से दे सके दें थैंक्स बसंत जी थैंक्स थैंक्स जी कुछ कहें मैं सृजन के कविता अड्डा में अपने मित्र कवि बोधिसत्व का बहुत स्वागत करता हूं और मुझे पूरी उम्मीद है कि इस मंच पर कविता पढ़कर उन्हें भी उतना ही आनंद आएगा मैं उनका स्वागत करता हूं अभिनंदन करता हूं नमस्ते एवरीवन दिस इज अ वेरी गुड अपॉर्चुनिटी फॉर मी आई एम वेरी हैप्पी एंड थैंकफुल टुवर्ड्स पोएट्री एडला एंड सृजन पोएट्री आई विल कॉल दिस इवनिंग द इवनिंग ऑफ ग्रेट रॉबर्ट बर्न्स आई एम अबाउट टू रीड माय टू थ्री पोएट्रीज मैं अपनी तीन कविताएं पढ़ूंगा और बहुत कम समय लूंगा आप लोगों का आ, मैं पहली कविता पढ़ रहा हूं अपनी पहली किताब सिर्फ कभी नहीं से आ, टाइटल है चाहता हूं बड़ी अजीब बात है जहां कुछ नहीं होता मैं वहीं सब कुछ पाना चाहता हूं बहुत अच्छे बाबा थैंक यू बड़ी अजीब बात है जहां कुछ नहीं होता मैं वहीं सब कुछ पाना चाहता हूं वहीं पाना चाहता हूं अपने सवालों का जवाब जहां लोग वर्षों से चुप हैं चुप हैं कि उन्हें बोलने नहीं दिया गया चुप हैं कि क्या होगा बोलकर चुप हैं कि वे चुप्पी वादी हैं मैं उन्हीं आंखों में अपने को खोजता हूं जिनमें कोई भी आकृति नहीं उभरती अब मैं उन्हीं आंखों में अपने को खोजता हूं जिनमें कोई भी आकृति नहीं उभरती अब मैं उन्हीं आवाजों में चाहता हूं अपना नाम जिनमें नहीं रखता मायने नामों का होना न होना मैं उन्हीं का साथ चाहता हूं मैं उन्हीं का साथ चाहता हूं जो भूल जाते हैं मिलने के ठीक बाद कि कभी मिले थे किसी से बड़ी अजीब बात है जहां कुछ भी नहीं होता मैं वहीं सब कुछ पाना चाहता हूं वाह क्या बात अच्छे, बहुत अच्छे बहुत अच्छे प्लीज थैंक यू मैं अपनी दूसरी कविता पढ़ रहा हूं छोटा आदमी छोटा आदमी छोटी छोटी बातों पर नाराज हो जाता हूं भूल नहीं पाता हूं कोई उधार जोड़ता रहता हूं पाई पाई का हिसाब छोटा आदमी हूं बड़ी बातें कैसे करूं बहुत अच्छे बहुत अच्छे प्लीज छोटी छोटी बातों पर नाराज हो जाता हूं भूल नहीं पाता हूं कोई उधार जोड़ता रहता हूं पाई पाई का हिसाब 
छोटा आदमी हूँ बड़ी बातें कैसे करूं माफी मांगने पर भी माफ नहीं कर पाता हूँ छोटे छोटे दुखों से उबर नहीं पाता हूँ पाव भर दूध बिगड़ने पर कई दिन फटा रहता है मन पाव भर दूध बिगड़ने पर कई दिन फटा रहता है मन कमीज पर एक नन्ही खरोच देह के घाव से ज्यादा देती है दुख एक खराब मूली बिगाड़ देती है पूरे खाने का स्वाद क्या बात है एक खराब मूली बिगाड़ देती है पूरे खाने का स्वाद एक चिट्ठी एक एसएमएस का जवाब नहीं देने को याद रखता हूं उम्र भर छोटा आदमी और कर ही क्या सकता हूं सिवाय छोटी छोटी बातों को याद रखने के सौ ग्राम हल्दी पचास ग्राम जीरा बिखर जाने से तबाह नहीं होती जिंदगी जानता हूं पर क्या करूं सौ ग्राम हल्दी पचास ग्राम जीरा छीट जाने से तबाह नहीं होती जिंदगी जानता हूं पर क्या करूं छोटे छोटे नुकसानों को गाता रहता हूं हर अपने बेगाने को सुनाता रहता हूं अपने छोटे छोटे दुख आदमी हूं छोटा आदमी हूं छोटा इनकार नहीं करता एक छोटा ताना एक मामूली बात आदमी हूं छोटा इनकार नहीं करता एक छोटा ताना एक मामूली बात एक जरा सी गाली एक छोटी सी घात काफी है मुझे मिटाने के लिए क्या बात क्या बात शुक्रिया आदमी हूं छोटा इनकार नहीं करता एक छोटा सा ताना एक मामूली बात एक छोटी सी गाली एक जरा सी घात काफी है मुझे मिटाने के लिए मैं बहुत कम तेल वाला दिया हूं मैं बहुत कम तेल वाला दिया हूं हल्की हवा भी बहुत है मुझे बुझाने के लिए छोटा हूं पर रहने दो छोटा हूं पर रहने दो छोटी छोटी बातें कहता हूं कहने दो वाह क्या बात बहुत सुंदर बहुत सुंदर आपको आपको ये इस विकास को सुनने के बाद में ऐसा लगता है कि रॉबर्ट बर्न भी छोटेपन से शुरू किए थे आप भी एक छोटे से गांव में भदोई में आपने अपना जीवन बिताया वहीं आप छोटे से गांव के छोटे से स्कूल में आपने पढ़ा जी फिर भी आप में कुछ था कि आप एम ए और पी इलाहाबाद यूनिवर्सिटी से कर कर लिए इतना इतना जो ये जो आपका जो वाइड एक्सपेंस है वो उसको उसको सुन के बहुत ही अच्छा लग रहा है गोरी सर को जी थैंक यू सर अंतिम कविता पढ़ता हूँ सर समय नहीं लूंगा क्योंकि बहुत सारे लोग हैं माँ का नाच वहां कई स्त्रियां थी जो नाच रही थी गाते हुए वे खेत में नाच रही थी या आंगन में उन्हें भी नहीं पता था एक मटमैले बेतान के नीचे था चल रहा यह नाच कोई पीली साड़ी पहने थी कोई धानी कोई गुलाबी कोई जोगन सी सब नाचते हुए मदद कर रही थी एक दूसरे की थोड़ी देर नाच कर दूसरी के लिए हट जाती थी वे नाचने की जगह से कुछ देर बाद बारी आई माँ के नाचने की कुछ देर बाद बारी आई माँ के नाचने की उसने बहुत सधे ढंग से शुरू किया नाचना गाना शुरू किया बहुत पुराने तरीके से बहुत पुराना गीत माँ के बाद नाचना था जिन्हें वे भी जो नाच चुकी थी वे भी अरंभित मन ही मन नाच रही थी माँ के साथ मटमैले बेतान के नीचे इस छोर से उस छोर तक नाच रही थी माँ पैरों में बिवाइयां थी गहरे तक फटी टूट चुके थे घुटने कई बार झुक चली थी कमर पर जैसे भंवर घूमता है जैसे बवंडर नाचता है वैसे नाच रही थी माँ क्या बात मटमैले बितान के नीचे इस छोर से उस छोर तक नाच रही थी माँ पैरों में बिवाइयां थी गहरे तक फटी टूट चुके थे घुटने कई बार झुक चली थी कमर पर जैसे भंवर घूमता है जैसे बवंडर नाचता है वैसे नाच रही थी माँ आज बहुत दिनों बाद उसे मिला था नाचने का मौका वह नाच रही थी बिना रुके गा रही थी बहुत पुराना गीत गहरे सुरों में 
अचानक ही हुआ माँ का गाना बंद पर नाचना जारी रहा अचानक ही हुआ माँ का गाना बंद पर नाचना जारी रहा वह इतनी गति में थी कि बेबस घूमती जा रही थी फिर गाने की जगह उठा रोने का महान स्वर और फैलता चला गया उसके बिलाप का बितान वह नाचती रही बिलखते हुए धरती के इस किनारे से दूसरे किनारे तक समुद्र की लहरों से लेकर जुते हुए खेत तक सब भरे थे उसकी नाच की धमक से सब में समाया था उसका बिलखता हुआ गाना थैंक यू क्या थैंक यू सब को प्रणाम कर रहा हूँ बहुत अच्छा बहुत अच्छा आपकी लिखी हुई काव्य बहुत ही सराहनीय है आपने बहुत ही खूबसूरती से अपनी विचारधारा को सबके सम्मुख व्यक्त किया है थैंक यू मैम हम आपका आभार प्रकट करते हैं कि हमें इस मंच में श्रोता बनने का अवसर प्राप्त हुआ एंड मे आई नाउ इनवाइट प्रियंकर जी टू काइंडली मेक सम एक्सपर्ट कमेंट्स मुझे लगता है मित्र बोधि सत्व की कविताएं जो है वो अपने आप में एक संपूर्ण टिप्पणी है तो मुझे उस पर कुछ नहीं कहना चाहिए लेकिन माँ का नाच कविता जो है उसमें आनंद और करुणा किस तरह एक में एक हो जाते हैं कैसे एक साथ मिल जाते हैं उसका इतना सुंदर वर्णन हमें उस कविता में मिला और छोटी बातें छोटा आदमी ये जो है ये कोई बहुत ही बड़े मन का आदमी ही कह सकता है तो मैं कहूंगा कि जो अपने को ये मान ले कि मैं क्या हूं और जान जाए कि जीवन में वो क्या सोचता है क्या करता है वो बहुत बड़ा आदमी ही हो सकता है उन्हें बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद इन सुंदर कविताओं के लिए शुक्रिया प्रियंकर भाई आभारी हूँ सृजन अड्डा में बुलाने के लिए प्रका बसंत रुमता सर चंद्रानी जी सबका आभारी हूँ Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. May I now have the pleasure of inviting uh, Pranab Kumar Chattopadhyay to present his uh, poetry. He is a leading name in contemporary Bengali poetry. Has seven published books to his credit. He has also been uh, involved in the Little Magazine movement. and much much more about the poet in our chat so may i now have the pleasure of inviting pranab kumar chatopadhyay to present his poetry namaskar basanti ebong uposthit somosto vidyut jonge amar shraddha binamro abhivadan ei niye ditiyo bar amar moto ekta sadharon byakti ke amontron jananor jonno धन्य मन कर साधारण बोलें प्लीज भीषण प्रिय भीषण भलो कविता लिखें साधारण शब्द जूज कर खूब ही दुखित कर प्लीज ये बोलें ना धन्यवाद जाओ प्रथम कविता मात्र जी लेखाटर ऊपर दिए तुम्हारा हेटे गेले क्यों क्यों नाक झड़ले क्यों बा एदिक उदिक तक अंदर झर्णा मुक्त कर दिल अनये से मायर छवि नितान अवहल जा पड़े थे बार्धक्य शिशिर ना को वाराणसी किंबा बृंदावने नय चूल खसा हार जिर जिर देहर आयन झुके पड़ा बट अश्वत्थर नीचे शिकड़े बाकड़े तुम तो एख चेक कर दौड़ी जा विमानबंदर ओखने रेडुड शिडार पता भाषा शाशुड़ी मायर मुख मेपल कची मुखे आधो आधो बोल भाषे विदेशी भाषा और ये हार जिर जिर गाचे शो धरा डाले सजने फुल स्नेह भरा हासि एक बार तक देखले नाहे एत प्रज्ञावान तुम्हार कोट पतल ओहे ज्ञानी पंगपाल विकेल आलोक यही मात्र जे लेखाटर ऊपर 
থুতু ছিটিয়ে তুমি দৌড়ে গিয়েছ সেই তোমাকে এতকাল কোলে রেখে আলো জেলেছিল ভুলে গেলে দ্বিতীয় কবিতা কি বৃষ্টি দিন নামছে যখন সমস্ত দিন একটু কালো একটু ক্ষীণ সেই সময় ডাকছি তোমায় হে ভগবান বৃষ্টি দিন কাটছে যখন উষ্ণ ভীষণ হে ধরাতল রাত্রি দিন তখন তোমায় ডাকছি কেঁদে বৃষ্টি দিন বৃষ্টি দিন মনের ভিতর গুরু গুরু গর্জায় মেঘ সঙ্গালেন পকেট ফাঁকা মাসের শেষ কাটবে কিয়ে বিষম দিন তখনও এসে দুয়ারে বসে ডাকছি ঠাকুর বৃষ্টি দিন মুছিয়ে কালো বৃষ্টি এলো ওই চরাচর বাজ্যে বিন ডাকছে ময়ূর মুহুর মহু গাইছে হৃদয় হে রক্তিম শঙ্কা হরণ শঙ্কা হর ধৌসে মাটি যা মলিন লুকিয়ে আছে আমার মনে তোমার বুকে চিরদিন ফোটায় ফোটায় জাগ ধুয়ে সব এই আমাদের বৃষ্টি দিন নাচুক শিশু নাচুক পাখি নাচুক আকাশ মাটি ও জল এই ধারাপথ চোখের সাথে মিশুক এসে হৃদয় স্থল ফের ভরে যাক সব গ্লেসিয়ার আকাশ ছাত ছিদ্রহীন আনন্দে ঝিম 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 বৃষ্টি দিন আমার শেষ কবিতাটি করছি কবিতার নাম গন্ধানুগমন যে হাওয়ার বুক থেকে নিংড়ে নিতে জলকনা হাহা হু হু উচ্চ না দিয়ে আকাশে ছড়ালো ভুল হচ্ছে কানে বাজছে বলে উঠল ছান্দসী এত ভুল বাক্য গঠন আক্ষেপে চুল ছিলেন বৈয়াকরণে আর অন্য অর্থ খুঁজে পেলেন কিছু চিন্তা দিয়ে যে তখন মহানন্দে এ ঘাসে ও ঘাসে ঘুরে ডানার ফরফর নিয়ে আহিরি আকাশে শুদ্ধ সারণের রং ঢেলে দিয়েছিল কেউ কেউ শুনে টুনে মাথা নেড়েছিল সেসবই কারুর কাছে অবান্তর তকমা পেয়ে আবর্জনা পুরে ঘর পেল সেগুলো এখন এই বিশাল তিজেলে ভরা ধিমে আছে নাহারির আলো যেগুলো সাজানো হয় টেবিলে টেবিলে রোজ হজরের নমাজের পর পাণ্ডিত্যের নাক থেকে ভীষণ বিক্রম দেখে সুশীল শ্যামলে অন্ধ গন্ধানুগমন কাকতারুয়ার দেশে বন্ধ অন্ধত্বের আজ পদানুসরণের মহা উদ্বোধন নমস্কার we can invite uh, bodhayon who is our uh, representative uh, bengali coordinator onan uh, onnapurna and now may i invite bodhayon to uh, kindly uh, make a few comments pranob uh, little magazine er movement e ekjon agrogondho naam obosshoi ebong jelar kobider মানে কিভাবে প্রমোট করতে হয় তার একটা আশ্চর্য উদাহরণ হচ্ছে প্রণব অ্যান্ড অ্যাবাউট হিজ পোয়েট্রি আই ক্যান ওনলি লিসনিং টু কুমারেশ চক্রবর্তী and the details about kumaresh babu are also in our chat book but all i'd like to say because of the time constraint is that he started writing when he was still in school and he has been uh, trans his writings have been translated into various languages uh, also he has also written uh, stories and essays which have been published in prestigious uh, magazines so without any delay over to you kumarish babu rashtra nirdharito gontobbo bodh hajomer mangsho khonder motoni this is my title rashtra nirdharito gontobbo bodh hajomer mangsho khonder motoni bhul bishwasher puji niye jonmechi bolei রাষ্ট্র নির্ধারিত গন্তব্যের মাংসখণ্ড এত সুস্বাদু মনে হয় না খাওয়া পেট গোজা মিলে ভরা কবিতার শেষের পঙ্ক্তিও আসা যাওয়া করে ভুল বিশ্বাস নিজেকেই লুকিয়ে যেন 
শত্রুপক্ষের অন্তরি মিসাইল বাগিয়ে পেছনে ধাওয়া করে শীত পাহাড়ের শীত পাখিরা ডানায় ওম তুলে এনে সমতলের মায়া বিলেকের চারধারে ঘুরে ঘুরে খুঁটে খায় খুঁটে খেতে খেতে ডানা বিপন্ন হয়ে উঠলেও ফিরে যাবার ভাবনাটা সহসা বন্ধা হয়ে আসে আমার কৈশোর যৌবন ও মধ্যাহ্ন দুঃস্বপ্নের নগরী রাঙানো ঠোঁটের আলো আধারিত একাকার জীবনের কাছাকাছি আর কোথাও ফিরে যেতে পারে না এদিকে শহরের ধ্বংসস্তূপের ধ্বংসকাণ্ডের পরেও ধ্বংসস্তূপের উপরে বসে আছো তুমি কাক তোমারই কাছে শুধু একটাই প্রার্থনা আমার আমাকে তোমার ডানার বিগ্রহ প্রদান করো উড়ে উড়ে আমি যেন খুঁটে তুলে পৃথিবীকে যোগান দিয়ে যেতে পারি চারদিকে পড়ে থাকা দধিচি বর্গের সবকটা নির্বিকল্প হার আর একটা পড়ছি আগুনের কথা দুঃস্বপ্নের রাত নির্মোহ চোখে ঘুম চটকিয়ে অনুপ্রবেশে ঢুকে আসে রাতের গণিকা আত্মঘাতী চাষি গণধর্ষিতা বাংলার মা ভুল হয় লেলিন সরণী শহীদ মিনার কিংবা দত্তপুকুরের পড়া গঙ্গাপুরীর মেঠোপথ কোথায় রাখব পা কোন দিকে চলে গেছে মিছিলের মুখ কুড়ে ঘরে ফুটে চলে জোসনার কলে বরে সামনে দাঁড়িয়ে শুধু নবান্নের প্রথম সিঁড়ি ভিয়েতনামের মাটি পায়ে পায়ে মিশেছে বিগে ব্রিগেডের জমায়েতের ধুলো খেলার গোধুলিও শব্দের পাশে বসে কৈফিয়াত চায় কোনো কান্না নয় শোক নয় কোনোখানে বিবেকে হাতুড়ি পিটিয়ে বিস্তার চায় কলরব মধ্য পৌষে মধ্য রাতের ফুটপাত ছেঁড়া ময়লা কাথায় জড় সড় পাগল ফটা দিওষ্টের ফাঁকে ধরে রাখা বিড়ির আগুনে নিজেকে পুড়িয়ে কি পৃথিবী পোড়ানোর কথা ভাবছে সে ভালোবাসে তোমাকেও আদর্শ একবার উঠে এসে স্পষ্ট করে বলো কি হবে প্রতিরোধের ভাষা কে লিখবে তার নাম আমিও কি ওই পাগলের মতো টুকরো এক আগুনের কথা ভাববো না একটা ছোট্ট আত্মপ্রকাশে আত্মপ্রকাশে বৈভব ছিল না আত্মমগ্নতা এসেছিল শেষের কবিতার ঘ্রাণ পথ হেঁটেছি অনেক কখনো পায়ের উপর এসেছে পথ কখনো বা পথের উপরেই পথ হারিয়েছে বিষণ্ন পা অসমাপ্ত শব্দের ব্যারিকেটে সকালকে দাঁড়িয়ে থাকতে দেখে গন্তব্য খুলিয়ে গেছে গন্তব্যের কাছাকাছি তবু সেই পথটাকেই ঝেড়ে পুছে যত্নে তুলে রাখি জিমে গিয়ে টেডমিলে পা দুটোর স্টেপও মিলিয়ে নিয়ে এসে পাবলিক করে রাখি ফেসবুকে ভার্সিটির ক্যান্টিনে হাতের উপরে হাত রেখে তুমি কিংবা হাতের উপরে হাত রেখে আমি যে প্রতিশ্রুতি দিয়েছিলাম দুজন দুজনকেই মাথার ভেতরে তা উপদ্রুত অঞ্চলের মতো পড়ে থাকলেও যদি পায়ে পায়ে এসে কেউ জীবনানন্দীয় ভাবনায় হেঁটে যেতে চায় শর্তবিহীন তাকেই দিয়ে যাব সেই পথ লিখে নেবার যাবতীয় অক্ষর থ্যাংক ইউ সো মাচ কুমারেশ বাবু মেবি ওয়ান্স অ্যাগেন ইনভাইট বৌধ অ্যান্ড মুখার্জি টু শেয়ার হিজ ভিউজ কুমারের সম্বন্ধে আমাদের একটাই কথা হচ্ছে কুমারেশ কবিতা না লিখে থাকতে পারে না ওর প্রায় তেরোটা বই বেরিয়ে গেছে এবং আমাকে প্রতিবারই বলে ষোলোটা হয়ে গেছে এই যে ও তিনটে কবিতা পড়ল এই তিনটে কবিতার মধ্যে প্রচন্ড আগুন আছে এর মধ্যে প্রচন্ড ব্যতিক্রম আছে এই কারণে ও চারপাশে সামাজিক যেই ডিসক্রিমিনেটরি ব্যাপারগুলো দেখছে সোশ্যাল ইন্ডাস্ট্রি দেখছে তার বিরুদ্ধে কিন্তু ও বারবার কবিতা লিখেছে 
Thank you so much for your views, Bodha and Mukherjee. And so we understand that thematically, Kumarish Babu is also very close to uh, Robert Burns, He's talking about the common man and the problems of the common man. Thank you so much. May we have the pleasure of listening to our tribute giver now. May we, it is my honor and pleasure to invite Christine De Luca to read her own poetry now. Yes, Just a, uh, three, three yes. poems for you. This is my, my newest book. It's called Vive. And mm -hmm. I thought I mean, that's a Shetland word, which means vivid and clearly seen. I thought I'd read a, a rather lighthearted one to start with. It's in English. And I was a child, a teenager in the 1960s, which was a wonderful time to be a teenager. And this is about my lace petticoat, which I've called Survivor because I kept it for 60 years. And there's some pictures there for you. Survivor, early 1960s, and even without black stockings, there was a touch of ooh la la, of moulin rouge, in that come and get me petticoat. I craved its flounces of net, layer on layer, its stiff white swing, and when seated, its frou-frou barricade, it was quite the thing until Mary Quant threw it aside, pared us down to stick insects, pin thin. But gosh, we loved that look too, straight and short and hot. The underskirt, a squashed up bundle of awakening, angst and desired, desire sulked in cupboards, presses, under beds, moved bulkily from digs to rented flats, from home to home, each time a little more limp, a little greyer. Six decades on, it is vintage and has gone to a charity shop. It must have been snapped up for my eyes are drawn to the young blonde bouncing down Hanover Street in winter sunshine, black tights, ex-army boots, and no skirt to cover the darling garment. She's loving it. And I'm still pining, still smitten. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Very silly, very silly. And this one is in my mother tongue, which is the Shetland tongue, Atlantic. And um, it started off, I was doing a um, collaboration with the artist Victoria Crow during lockdown. And she was locked up in her garden. And this was one of the paintings she sent me. And it was a beautiful morning scene with the sun coming through. And this bit here is quite abstract, all the reflections, but the sort of frostedness reminded me of childhood. And we lived in an uncentrally heated house in Shetland. And sometimes it was frost on the inside of our windows and we used to sort of scratch it off. So that kind of came into the poem. And then the other thing that comes in are these snow globes. I don't imagine you have them. But we give them to children, you shake them and the, the white, pretend snow, uh, makes a real snowstorm and then gradually subsides. So that was just a little background for you. And I'll read it for you in English first. That's just a version. Vive. The world. So this is a lockdown poem. I'm locked in. The world shrunk to a window pane holds its breath. A morning scene with light, listless and dour, seeps through a muslin cloud before warming gently to opal scumble. But nose to glass, a cold fumble, a once upon a time sense, blurry and frosted, an inner world lacking peace and half-hearted. Remembering snow-filled globes we'd shake, waiting for the flakes to settle back. Still spellbound, bewildered, and full of hope for our earth made new, we stumble on, like peering at that sphere, unveiling slowly till vivid and crystal clear. Vive, the world shrunk into window pin heads its breath, a morning scene we light, dirless and dour, drattling through sire cloak so for warm and piri wise to opal scumble 
but nose to glass, a carl fumbler, inch up in a time sense, blurry and frosted, an inner world o nae pace and half-hearted, minding on flutter of globes with shack, waiting for the snar to settle back, still stumps and spellbound and foo o hoop for where earth made new we stutter on like glindering at that sphere coming up slowly till vive and crystal clear how beautiful I guess. Yes. Let's keep it. so one short poem to finish with uh, in english and it's set in the northwest of scotland and Ascent, a beautiful bare area, and you get these sugarloaf sort of remnant stump mountains, and that one is called Sylvan, and it's uh, reflected. You can see in the in the lake in the loch. So this is me talking. You might say to my uh, adult son. What's in a name? If and when I've mislaid my name and stare at you disconcertingly. Let me spend a day parked by Sylvan, perplexed by broken water. Turn my calendar to the mountain's season and set my watch by shadows on the loch. Forgive me if I lose the reason that we came or my gaze clouds in a codfish kind of way. Or if the name I chose for you eludes me, I'll still sense mountain, water, love. So beautiful. Your poetry is so beautiful, uh, Christine. There's something so delicate about it and yet so profound. Your language is brilliant, beautiful. Oh, yeah beautifully expressed there's a memory there there's love there nature there and you too can turn anything into poetry in fact if i remember correctly uh, the american poet john whittier was actually motivated to write poetry after reading robert burns because robert mm -hmm. burns could turn anything into poetry he was inspired <laughs> by the countryside and when i hear you i feel so much the same you know that how you brought <laughs> the light to you to human people. relations yeah. Yeah. everything yeah. in a delicate manner yes oh, chandrani no. is there something you would like to comment no 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 i just i uh, said yes i fully support what you say uh, love your metaphors, love your imagery, love the language, uh, love, uh, just love the way you have recited it. In fact, that is what sets your poems and, uh, you know, your poetry apart from yeah, many other you, you move, move to the next one. <laughs> yes, I'll, I'll, just, I'll just interrupt for a moment. Yes, yes. Uh, I could not help but remembering Christine from uh, 2009, when uh, together with her was Robin, Robin Mazak. And she, she, she has, she has unfortunately not yet been able to join today, and I do hope she does. But uh, she, uh, she was heading at that time the Scottish Poetry Library, and uh, we were amazed because we had an instant bond because uh, Robin told us that the library had been founded in the same year as when Srijan was founded. So this instant bond happened, and then they were uh, not only uh, you know encouraging poets but also the uh, people's connection with, uh, with poets or the, the presentation. Today, uh, listening to, to uh, Christine present uh, First Burns and then her own lovely poems, uh, I, I, I felt instantly uh, sort of a, a feeling that neither in Calcutta nor I think in the entire country do we have anything as devoted to poetry and the presentation of poetry like the Scottish Library. And uh, um, uh, Mandy Haggett, she was the third poet, thanks to British Council, that we had on our uh, rooftop uh, and, the, and the tram at that time. I thought, I must share these emotions which, uh, which sprout from within. But uh, we are very grateful 
uh, Christine that you joined. <laughs> I beg your pardon, I beg your pardon. Did you visit the Scottish cemetery in Calcutta? There's a Scottish yes, cemetery. Yes, we did. We did, yeah. It is pretty much yeah. in ruins, I believe. Yes, indeed, as Basanjji said, uh, you, uh, the poetry that you read and the way you explained Burns has been a completely different experience altogether. <laughs> yes. Amazing, never to be forgotten experience altogether. Right. Thank you so much, Christine. Yes. And with you that, we move on with our uh, with our poetry mm -hmm. reading session. And may I have the pleasure and the honor of inviting Zarina Zareen to make her presentation. Zarina, you are here. Huh. Yeah, so Zarina, uh, well, she needs no introduction. And uh, Zarina is a much loved Urdu coordinator at Srijan. She's also associate professor Urdu in the University of Calcutta. And her pen name is Zareen. She, uh, apart from the many feathers in her cap, uh, she has a book which has been included in the master's degree course of B.R. Ambedkar University. And she is also very decorated, honored with many awards. Zareen, we just can't wait to hear you read. Mm -hmm. Over to you, Zareen. Thank you so much. Bad bad shukriya. I will hear one ghazal and one ghazal. There are some words in the ghazal, some words in the ghazal, which I will tell you. तो बेहतर मैं जानती हूँ आप सब जानते हैं लेकिन कुछ सहूलतों के लिए मुनसिफ उर्दू में कहते हैं जज को जो फैसला देता है इंसाफ करता है अदल कहते हैं इंसाफ को और मस्कन कहते हैं घर को मेरी गजल में एक लफ्ज आया है जो रिपीट हुआ है क्रिया 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 का मतलब है कि यूनिवर्स के हर कॉर्नर हर गोशे में हर किनारे में कायनात के रश्क कहते हैं जेलसी को और तजल्ली कहते हैं जलवा को रक्स करना यानी नाचना डांसिंग और तलातुम कहते हैं जो दरिया में तूफान उठता है और साहिल कहते हैं समुंदर या दरिया के किनारे को बीच को अजम कहते हैं करेज या हिम्मत को बस मैं अपनी गजल सुना रही हूँ आप लोगों को मैं आप लोगों तक पहुंच सकूं आपके दिल में उतर सकूं गजल का मतला है है जो मुनसिफ वही कातिल ठहरा है जो मुनसिफ वही कातिल ठहरा अदल का मिलना तो मुश्किल ठहरा ओ बहुत सुंदर है बहुत जो मुनसिफ वही कातिल ठहरा अदल का मिलना तो मुश्किल ठहरा तुझसे मिलते ही लगा यूं जैसे तुझसे मिलते ही लगा यूं जैसे तेरा मिलना ही तो हासिल ठहरा तेरा मिलना ही तो हासिल तुझसे मिलते ही लगा यूं जैसे तेरा मिलना ही तो हासिल ठहरा और ये शेर खास तौर पे देखें कि तुझको क्यों ढूंढती क्रिया क्रिया तुझको क्यों ढूंढती क्रिया क्रिया तेरा मस्कन तो मेरा दिल ठहरा तुझको क्यों ढूंढती क्रिया क्रिया तेरा मस्कन तो मेरा दिल ठहरा और ये शेर खास तौर पे रश्क होता है मुझी से मुझको रश्क होता है मुझी से मुझको तू मेरी रूह में शामिल ठहरा बहुत रश्क होता है मुझी से मुझको तू मेरी रूह में शामिल ठहरा और गजल का आखिरी शेर है रक्स जारी है तजल्ली का जहां रक्स जारी है तजल्ली का जहां हाँ तजल्ली माने तजल्ली माने जलवा मेरा है ना लीला रक्स जारी है तजल्ली का जहां हाँ वो महफिल तो मेरा दिल ठहरा क्या बात क्या बात रक्स जारी है तजल्ली का जहां हाँ वो महफिल तो मेरा दिल ठहरा और मकता देखें कि गम नहीं जर्री तला तुम का मुझे तूफानों का डर नहीं गम नहीं जर्री तला तुम का मुझे अजम जो अब मेरा साहिल ठहरा अजम जो अब मेरा साहिल ठहरा है जो मुनसिफ वही कातिल ठहरा अदल का मिलना तो मुश्किल ठहरा एक नज्म ये नज्म मैंने अपने अब्बा के लिए लिखी है वो गुजर गए अब हमारे बीच नहीं है नज्म का नाम है मेरे अब्बा ये नज्म मैं है अपने सृजन के प्रेसिडेंट साहब लेट हरलाता जी को डेडिकेट कर रही हूँ वो भी हमारे लिए सृजन के लिए फादर फिगर ही थे तो ये उनको उनकी नजर है नज्म का नाम है मेरे अब्बा 
तुम्हारी यादें सिसक सिसक कर हमेशा दिल में बसी रहेंगी तुम्हारी यादें सिसक सिसक कर हमेशा दिल में बसी रहेंगी तुम्हारी यादें तड़प तड़प कर हमेशा मुझसे यही कहेंगी कि तुम कि तुम सा कोई जहां में मेरे न था कभी भी न हो सके तुम ही तुम ही तो थे मेरे गिरा माया यानी कीमती अनमोल तुम ही तो थे वो गिरा माया के जिसके दम से था सर पे साया तुम ही तो थे वो गिरा माया के जिसके दम से था सर पे साया कड़ी तपिश में भी छाव थे तुम घने शजर से वसी फलक से जो तुम जो तुम सिधारे थे मेरे अब्बा जो तुम सिधारे थे मेरे अब्बा तो सांस मेरी भी थम गई जो तुम सिधारे थे मेरे अब्बा तो सांस मेरी भी थम गई थी मगर खुदा की ये मसलहत है कि जीते जी भी इसी जहां में हर एक लम्हा हजारों मौते हमें है मरना हर एक कदम पर हजार कांटे हर एक कदम पर हजार कांटे हर एक नफस में बहुत चरारे तमाम राहों में पसंद आई हरे कदम पर हजार कांटे हर एक नफस में बहुत शरारे तमाम राहों में बस अंगारे के सर पे मेरे तपिश की चादर तो अब मुसलसल तनी हुई है के सर पे मेरे तपिश की चादर तो अब मुसलसल तनी हुई है तमाम कांटे ये सब शरारे तपिश की शिद्दत ये सब अंगारे तमाम कांटे ये सब शरारे तपिश की शिद्दत ये सब अंगारे और ये तिश्ना लबी की शिद्दत ये पाँव के बिल बिलाते छाले तमाम कांटे ये सब शरारे तपिश की शिद्दत ये सब अंगारे और ये तिश्ना लबी की शिद्दत ये पाँव के बिल बिलाते छाले अज्म को मेरे न ठग सकेंगे मेरी हिम्मत को नहीं तोड़ सकते अज्म को मेरे न ठग सकेंगे वो कुछ भी लेकिन कदम मेरे अब नहीं रुकेंगे वो कुछ भी लेकिन कदम मेरे अब नहीं रुकेंगे अभी तो मुझको कई मनाजिल से है गुजरना बहुत सारे डेस्टिनेशन को पाना है फतेह करना है अज्म को मेरे न ठग सकेंगे वो कुछ भी लेकिन कदम मेरे अब नहीं रुकेंगे अभी तो मुझको कई मनाजिल है कई मनाजिल से है गुजरना कि तुमसे सीखा है अमल पे हम यानी कंटिन्यूस स्ट्रगल कि तुमसे सीखा है अमल पे हम तुम ही से सीखा जहद मुसलसल तुम ही से सीखा जहद मुसलसल शुक्रिया बहुत खूब बहुत खूब जमीन बहुत खूब थैंक यू सो मच जमीन दिस वाज सो ब्यूटीफुल लेडिंग विद इमोशन एंड यू वर रिड्यूसिंग अस टू टीयर्स एज वेल Actually, Zareen, okay. I remembered my father a lot when you read. Actually, it. I did the same. Uh, I did. Yeah. May I invite Priyankar Ji to kindly share his views here? इतनी भावपूर्ण कविता थी कि पिता पर बहुत सारी कविताएं मैंने पढ़ी हैं और सुनी हैं लेकिन एक अरसे बाद इतनी डूब कर लिखी गई कविता पिता पर मैंने सुनी और मैं खुद एक ऐसी जगह पहुंच गया कि मुझे समझ में नहीं आ रहा था कि मैं क्या कहूं उस कविता के बारे में और गजल तो उनकी अच्छी है ही लेकिन इस कविता के लिए हम उनको हमेशा याद रखेंगे और कभी मौका मिला तो इसे फिर से सुनेंगे शुक्रिया थैंक यू सो मच प्रियंकर जी and uh, with that now may i have the pleasure and the honor of inviting ratna deepa deghosh to kindly present her poetry anupurna uh, uh, yes. you won't know but uh, our uh, other bengali uh, coordinator is here uh, sir professor jamal okay and uh, he he is of course you know conducted many proceedings in bengali So, All right. Uh, do do keep in mind to talk about. Of course, that. I shall invite him. And uh, after Ratna Deepa has uh, presented her poetry, thank you for reminding me, Basanji. So, Ratna Deepa, uh, are you here on the platform? 
So perhaps we'll come back to her later. And may I invite Shaborno Roy to make his presentation? But I just like to say this little bit that he is an engineer with varied interests. He uh, his interests include writing both technical and literary articles, uh, also uh, poetry as well as um, other kinds of writing. He is into traveling and he's also interested in storytelling, world cinema and television serials. So over to you, Shabar Naroy. Yeah, thank you, uh, Srijan. I'm reading at Srijan for the second time. Uh, my first uh, poem is titled End Wall. Was I left inside an airless chamber, a vacuum in my intermittent dreams? The chamber was made of glass panels, suffocating and chilling. Outside, I could see flakes of snow floating in midair. I was losing every bit of myself gradually. My alphabets, my words, my sentences, my paragraphs, my stories. I could no longer breathe inside the chamber. My insides were churning on the verge of a violent vomit. As my eyes closed, I saw my mother, disheveled, running wildly inside the jungle away from me. And then I saw them coming back to me like hurling rockets. My alphabets, my words, my sentences, my paragraphs, my stories, like colorful graffiti on the end wall. Profound, really profound. profound. Absolutely profound. Araku. I saw another night falling on the green mountains and valleys of our youth. A silent crucible of unknown trees, grasslands and tribes pouring a rhythm in my soul. For a second, I thought, where was I? Where would I go? When I saw you running through the diffusing beam of smoke breaking on the southern mountains like a deer. The stars twinkled like never before, showering your path with ancient light. The green mountains and valleys of our youth suddenly shone with another light fired from within the tired earthly layers. You came so near, panting and gasping, looking into my eyes. I opened my eyes. Was it real? Was it a dream? I knew it was happening in another world where you and I lived. Wonderful. Almost Keatsian, the last bit. Uh, this is uh, Winter Poems 2010, number 11. Remember the grassland island where we ran and feasted, you and I, like beasts dancing to the music of advancing vortices of wind, competing with the rushing balls of clouds and swaying to the wild blades of grass, the sky exploded with dazzling beams of light, glittering platinum swords at play, and then flowed those cold whips of rain. Yet we danced like beasts, pouncing on each other on jagged rocks, soaked on the ruthless lashing of rain, catching the first tentative glimpse of a surmounting ocean, rising and approaching thick walls of black, blue and frothy white, threatening to drown the grassland island. Remember that underground log? 
hut, sorry, remember the, un, that underground log hut on this grassland island where we made love, when the sun and fury almost tore us apart? Yes, this was where we argued. Where is home? What is home? Whether home is only an idea, an imagination of man. How far are we from our home? Is this our home? An endless vault of space, unable to connect to our past and future? Remember those bloodhound foxes, wolves, worms, insects and snakes and hovering vultures who craved to make us their food and failed because of our cunning? Remember that stock mansion we built year after year, cutting rocks, transporting those chiseled pieces of rubles on mules, anchoring them in layers on mortar, adding doors, windows, chimneys and cabinets and curves and floral shapes one after the other, getting awed by our craft of using space, trees and stones. Then one night a colossal ship arrived at the coast of this grassland island to take us back. Where? I cannot remember. Can you? What I remember is, as we boarded this mammoth ship, bathed in purple, misty light, we were puzzled as we found no one alive on it. Instead, its chambers were filled with decaying skulls and skeletons of some other species melting. Aliens, you said, they have the power to return from the dead. My last poem. What? My last poem, uh, it's a very small poem. Winter Poems 2012, number 10. In the woods, the leaves are falling. In the woods, the leaves are falling. In the woods, the leaves are falling. From the books, the words are falling. From the books, the words are falling. From the books, the words are falling. From their sockets, the eyeballs are falling. From their sockets, the eyeballs are falling. From their sockets, the eyeballs are falling. The storm that is swelling by the hour is blinding. Thank you. Thank you so much. A very powerful poetry. They really hit you, you know. Wonderful. Your metaphors are stunning, absolutely. Maybe we should uh, invite uh, Anjana Basu to make a few comments here. Anjana has just left. Okay, but, so uh, should we, uh, uh, could we have the pleasure of hearing our president, uh, Uma Das Gupta, to make a few comments? Right. So, uh, I, I, I'm sorry I couldn't, I've been listening to your poetry, but I just had to uh, look after a couple of housekeeping things. But I really very much liked not only the, the poetry, the, the, the themes of the poetry, but also your language. I thought your, the language was both beautiful as well as strong and powerful. Thank and you. that that I that I found uh, really something uh, to uh, deeply appreciate. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Now, uh, thank you so much, uh, Shaborno Roy, for such a powerful poetry, hard hitting imagery. This uh, these poems are going to remain long in our minds. We uh, would like to invite uh, Ratna Deepa Deghosh once more. No, I don't think, uh, I think she has left. Uh, she's not been able to join again because she, she, she was messaged. She for a long time, but... Yes. but she, 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 just left. Left. She, she was not, her Her connection has gone gone bad. So her connection not... has perhaps gone. Yes, certainly yeah, we miss shall her. miss her poetry. We will look forward to hearing her at some other time. So mm -hmm. Basanski, do we come to an end here? Yes, or... I think we will have to maybe... We will just uh, just uh, uh, you know inform everyone that uh, Ratnadeepa has uh, written books upon books of poetry. Yes, yes. And, you I know, could. Um, Jamal Achuna to me. He left the meeting. So I think let us uh, invite now 
our dear friend uh, Ashok uh, to uh, to uh, propose a vote of thanks has been with Srijan uh, from day one, and uh, he has um, a splendid writer himself, a poet himself, who writes bilingually both in uh, English and in Bengali, and uh, he's an excellent uh, filmmaker of repute. And uh, he's carried many, many evenings for us. He's presented many uh, world poets for us, like uh, Lorca, like uh, Nash, Milots, even Mayakovsky, and uh, etc. I mean, and she's with all our events, he's anchored so many events and uh, he's a wonderful speaker. So Ashok is a very um, a person who can uh, understand poetry, appreciate poetry, admire poetry. And I'm sure his vote of thanks will have uh, meaning for all of us. Ashok, please. Uh, thank you very much, Asal. And thank you to everyone for making this evening truly memorable. Not the least of which is Christine herself, you know. She is a reason, actually, for making this evening beautiful because it is so unreasonable, as is her poetry. I remember Bernard Shaw in his uh, revolutionary handbook, which was appended to Man and Superman, said that all progress depends on the unreasonable man. <laughs> and so is Christine, and so was Robert Burns. <laughs> I think she hit the nail on the head, or the several nails on their heads, when she pointed out that he was truly Scottish in every way. And I think as many of the poets today have mentioned, and indeed Annapurna also, that it's been quite a Scottish evening, minus, of course, the inebriation. But we leave that for another day. Uh, Annapurna herself has been quite wonderful, witty, and wittier, whom she referred to once. So thank you to Annapurna, and forgive me for that. Rather un palatable pun, but we were that. But Christine, uh, it was really wonderful, you know. You actually got into the skin of the poem, which is what Basant always wants. Uh, you know, it was interesting and engaging. Never once did you feel that it was going on for too long. You, know, you talked about his dialect, you talked about his love life, and the beauty and the anomalies therein, the brilliant use of language, sometimes his sanitization of body verses and his metric rhythm, which was taken up by other poets. So all in all, it was a wonderful presentation. As far as your poetry, that was another story altogether. As Annapurna pointed out rightly, it was another Christine. We've had two Christines today. The poet Christine was truly vivid in every sense of the word. The use of language was exemplary. And it was so descriptive that it really became vivid. We were actually able to see a Scottish landscape or even the underskirt that had to be pushed away and which no one now wears. We saw that too, if I may be a little facetious. But in all her poetry, it was poetic and palpable. It was something to feel, as Basant very rightly pointed out, that in Old Lang Syne, there is a kind of vigor and that vigor is very much there in the Scottish airs, which so influenced Tagore and so beautifully sung by Christine and the translation, or shall we say transformation, or even transmogification by Chandrani. She did wonderfully, both as a reporter, interrogating Christine, talking with Annapurna, and also singing that song, Urano Sheidinir Kota, wonderfully. It reminded me of my childhood, as Basant rightly pointed out, Basant makes all the right noises. It brought tears <laughs> to our eyes. It literally brought tears. I had to switch off my, you know, it, I was actually in tears. It was so beautiful because it combined memory, which is one of the primary elements in Burns' poetry and in Christine's. So thank you very much to Andrani. Thank you, Ashuddha. Thank you so much. Thank you, Ashuddha. Andrani to Christine. Now, we've had some very interesting poets today. Um, I can immediately mention Shaborno Roy or is it Shaborno Rai? Uh, yeah. So he was excellent. As everyone said, he was an engineer 
And there was an intricacy in his construction of the verse, as Umadi rightly pointed out, in the use of language and in his dream, you know, he was writing a kind of a dream verse where you did not know really at the end whether it was reality or dream. So thank you very much, Chabor Norai. Thank you, thank you. And many thanks to those who have selected these poets, you know, like Anjana Basu for English, um, for Priyanka, who also commented so beautifully and so succinctly for Hindi and Urdu, you know, and to Bodhayon, who also did a very good job in not only selecting the poets in consultation with Basant, who is, as he says, the man Friday, but he's actually the man who's behind mm -hmm. it all. They have actually created an incredible evening today. The others were equally good. And uh, Zarina Zareen was very emotional. It made us emotional, as Annapurna pointed out. But also use of language, intricate use of words, which he explained, brought the poetry to the fore. It's after all the words. I go back to Christine and, you know, uh, when she says uh, uh, that use of certain words by Burns creates a kind of a, a mosaic of a filigree, similarly in the case of Zareen. So it has been a Burns evening throughout, you know, all the poets have, you know, talked to him. And the two Bangla poets were also very good. Kumaresh, as rightly pointed out by both Ayam, is socio-political in his import. He is a realist poet, but that does not mean he doesn't take recourse to metaphor. There is metaphor in his poetry too, but he's very biting, sometimes satiric. And uh, Pranav Babu also has an expressionistic feel to his poetry, you know. And there is, uh, you know, as I found in the poetry of Bodhisattva, the use of very commonplace things to reveal something profound, sometimes even objects. Uh, to quote Eliot, it's like the objective correlative, which actually experiences. And when he talks of the Chota Admi, the little man, he's saying something truly profound. He really warms the cockles of the heart, as the British would probably say. But very good uh, poetry from um, Bodhisattva and uh, extremely subtle. And I think uh, that's about it, unless I've left out someone. But uh, many thanks to those who anchored the program, those who commented on it, those who uh, took part in the Adda. Literally, the today's was an Adda, unlike other days. And many thanks to Basad for that and to Annapurna. It was like a lot of an interaction. And that went off very well. I'm sorry for taking up so much of your time. Thank you very much. Yeah, the one person you omitted was yourself. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for such kind words. We were waiting to listen to you. Absolutely. That is a fact. We were, we were actually waiting to listen to Ashok Vishwanathan. You know, at that point when you said uh, that uh, um, you were remind, uh, you, you were reminded of you know two worlds flitting between two worlds i said that indeed you know that sounded very keatsian to me do i awake or sleep yeah and uh mm -hmm. thank you so much yeah. your uh, comments have uh, actually enriched us thank, thank you indeed Basant. and of thank course you, you all wouldn't that. know i'll just i'll just end with this lovely note you wouldn't know that uh, christine uh, has been uh, so wonderful in spending two evenings with us Yes. One evening with Chandrani, uh, mm -hmm. you know, uh, talking thank about you, what, what so how she wants thank to you. do. Thank you. No, thank you. And the it's other perfect. with Annapurna. I mean, yes. it's, Thanks, it's the thank first you. time in yeah. our experience of the last since June we are doing Absolutely. poetry on this. <laughs> the first time, of course, uh, we had this uh, French poet also Cecile, who spent an evening, uh, you know, planning it out with us. Mm -hmm. But what Christine has done is absolutely historic as far as Fusion oh. is concerned. And and thank you very much. Well. Christine, I don't know if you remember, I was on that tram ride and I was sort of talking about all those different places. Uh, uh -huh. oh, how lovely. But I was uh, uh, kind of uh, taking you through the, uh, the annals of the city. Yeah. Well, that's right. That's right. It was wonderful. Wow. Wonderful. I remember the young reporter put a microphone in front of me and said, I believe you're called the hermit crab. And I said, 
<laughs> Never heard that one before. I said, where did you get that from? And he said, Wikipedia. <laughs> oh, dear. I think someone had yeah. gone into Wikipedia and put a little bit in a lots and lots and lots of profiles. And he was just unfortunate. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we I must know. redo it's... this Scottish trip in Calcutta once more. Now, yes, once you know, the restrictions again. are uh, lifted, those of us who missed it, we yeah. want to be part of it. We want, it to, be part of it. We want to be part of it. We want to be part of it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> True. And of okay. course, thank you very much, our dear president, for uh, for being here today. And uh, she has uh, lots of things to engage her with because uh, her second book, uh, the book she's working on, she's working very hard at it. And her book on, uh, on Srinagar and it just come out. And I've been fortunate to read a, a, a chapter or two. And it's very, very enlightening and absolutely new book. And from Niyogi, uh, you know, the history of Srinagar. And, and so thank you all of you. Thank may you. I, uh, you so may I bid you goodbye you. and bye -bye. see you again, bye -bye. Christine? Maybe oh, I'll keep on, yes. I'll keep on, I'll keep on badgering and sending <laughs> our invites every last Saturday. <laughs> so if you could keep every last Saturday free for us, maybe oh, you could join. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Good night. Good night. Good night.